Our next guest is the co-creator and star of a new stop-motion parody of National Public Radio. It's called In the Know. My favorite sport is the Great British Bake Off because it's so important to show ugly people on television. What, what do you think people enjoy about watching boxing? Um, the science. Some people are into the science, the technique, and some people are truly into the brutality of it. Hmm. Did you ever think in the middle of a bout, I wish I could just look my opponent in the eye and say, I am enough? I do that when I smash his face. In the Know is streaming on Peacock now. Please welcome Zach Woods. Zach, is there anything you'd like to announce? Are you with child? <sighs> I have a big announcement, actually, no joke. OK, great. I don't think anyone knows this. I'm the first to break this news. Elizabeth Moss is pregnant. What? what? <laughs> yeah. Would it be funny if you did? You were the one to <laughs> reveal that, and she didn't want anyone to know? I scooped her. Yeah. <laughs> you created uh, this show. We yes. just saw the clip with Mike Judge, who's one, I think, like one of the gr great comedy brains of all time, right? Yeah. Uh, Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, uh, Silicon Valley, which you were on, which was a fantastic Thank show. Thank you. And then you came to, did you go to him and say, I have an idea for a show uh, goofing lightly on NPR he or was vice versa? Like, I, I think like I'm a generally a curious person, so I ask people a lot of questions. And he noticed that I sort of tacitly interview people, and he also noticed that I was what you could describe as like a cuck beta male NPR freak. And, uh, and he was like, well, let's monetize that and uh, make a show where you play someone who is essentially yourself. And I was like, okay, that sounds good. And, and, uh, and a delicate puppet that breaks easily that is being manipulated by forces beyond his own awareness is the perfect medium for a character like me. <laughs> <laughs> stop motion animation. Yeah. I love that. I love stop motion animation. It always reminds me, I'm sure people bring it up all the time, the Rankin Bass, the old uh, you yeah. know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the yeah. year without a Santa Claus, those things. But it seems very, first of all, time consuming, expensive, and old fashioned. It is, it's all those things. Uh, I think the thing that's really beautiful about it is that each character, and I didn't know this before I did it, each character is played by like 30 different animators. So it's like each person puts a little piece of their soul in each of the characters. 30 for 30. each character? Yeah. It's that beautiful. seems like too many for yeah. each character. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, eventually I started cutting their benefits and things. So uh, that sure, yeah. I was just like, it's financially untenable, so no braces for your kids this year. Did you go to the, where do they make actually? In Portland. There's this amazing company called Shadow Machine. And I was going to Portland and uh, I had a terrible experience because uh, we, we have an episode where they get a lactation station put in the office, despite the fact that no one is breastfeeding, just as a kind of gesture of inclusivity. And uh, I, was talking to the <laughs> I was talking to the production designer, and I was trying to describe what I wanted from the lactation station. So I was in LAX, and there's a lactation station. Now, I have played a lot of creepy characters in my life and, and uh, off-putting individuals. So I start, I take out my phone because I want to take a picture of the lactation station to send to the production designer. So I take a picture, and as I'm taking the picture, I hear someone go, Gabe? And uh, I turn, and there's a, a, a teenage boy and his father watching me take a picture of a lactation station <laughs> by myself in the airport. And I was like, oh, they think I'm as creepy as one of the characters they play. And I went, no, no, it's for a show. <laughs> it sounds like, oh, yeah, it's going to be a show on the dark web. Yeah. And then... Um, <laughs> And then I said, no, if I was a milk, if I was a milk fetishist, I'd hide GoPros in there, you know? I would have... Sure. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Now I'm going to chloroform your dad if you don't get out of here. Yeah. This, um, and then you mix uh, regular, well, not regular people, yeah. like Tyson is certainly. Did Mike have any idea what was going on? Uh, like, because... <laughs> I'm guessing he didn't, you know, well, I'm sure he didn't see uh, puppets. Well, I don't know. You know, in that particular episode, Lauren has been diagnosed with passive sperm, um, which is when the sperm can't penetrate the egg, it can only spoon the egg. <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> he's very upset because 
donating to sperm banks is his, masturbating is his way of giving back. Oh. And so he can't do it anymore. So I had this very weird thing where I was like talking to Mike Tyson about my passive sperm. And he's saying, maybe you should take supplements. It'll make it more viscous. And I was just thinking like, this is what my immigrant ancestors came to America for. <laughs> so that one day their great grandson could talk to the heavyweight champion of the world about the thickness of his sperm. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so the American dream is real, people. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it sure is. Who else is on the show? Is it all boxers? No. <laughs> no. I mean, we have Jorge Masvidal, who's a cage fighter, but it's uh, Ken Burns, the documentarian. Okay. Roxanne Gay, the editorialist. Kaya Gerber. It's a bunch of Finn Wolfhards on it. It's a lot of different interesting people, so that was really fun. And is the character based on, uh, like, is it based on Ira Glass? Because it kind of seems, it looks like, a little bit like, but... It, or is it an, a, an amalgamation of the... It's a Frankenstein of the kind of uh, NPR unfortunates who I consider myself one of. It's like, they all kind of have the same almond-shaped head and the same... It's like Malcolm Gladwell, Terry Gross, Ira Glass, Ezra Klein, Michael Barbaro, they all are kind of from the same factory of, uh, you know, slightly melted people. And again, I say that as a slightly melted person. But, um, and me, also melted. me. It's also me. Yeah, you know, I get you. I, I do. Yes, yeah, there is a certain. I no, I understand I that. Yeah, when yeah. I, I let you, there is a certain uniformity to when you, you you shift that FM dial all the way over to the left. There's definitely a. That's right. This is like this is like a supernatural calm. Like there would be nothing scarier than one of those guys suddenly losing his mind and screaming at you. Oh uh, well, and I think right behind that very placid exterior, there lurks. A beast, I think. Like, I bet if you catch Malcolm Gladwell at the right moment, he'll wear wolf out on you big time. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's my sense. But yeah, they're like, they're, it's almost you picture like those people are like almost like if a Barnes and Noble had sex with a scarf, then they would be born. You uh, you directed a Super Bowl commercial, which is kind of exciting. That's true. Uh, you, with the cast of Suits, is yeah, that what right. I read? Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I would say that like directing, it's for a cosmetics company called Elf. Directing a cosmetics commercial is as close to participating in football as I will ever come. <laughs> and they even asked, they were like, well, we're trying to get tickets for the game. And I was like, don't want them. Not <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, because it's wasted on me. It's like <laughs> if they had offered me uh, a VIP passes to like a folk art quilting expo, I would be like, that could be some better. But uh, those aren't twelve thousand dollars a piece, though. I think you know you could have probably really? yeah, someone could... upcharged me yeah. big time <laughs> because. But it's nice to direct. I had this thing recently. Like I like directing because again, I get cast as these parts. Of, like like I had this thing recently that happened where someone called me. And they said, we want you, to, it was a producer, they said, I want you to play this part. And, and I talked to the director and she had independently decided that you should play this part. And I said, oh, that's great, send it to me. And I opened the script and it was, the part was named Client Number Two. <laughs> and it was a man who wanted someone to castrate him, <laughs> but they wouldn't, but he couldn't get anybody to castrate him. So then he tried to castrate himself and it didn't work. And two people independently were like, you're the man for that. You're the guy. You, you want to be castrated, but you're not effective enough to castrate yourself. This is all to say, I like directing better. I like, I prefer directing. Yeah. You need a castrate tour. Yeah. <laughs> I get to keep my, my masculinity intact. You know, I think step one for you, really what? turn your life around, you got to get a little bit of sun. You think so? Yeah, get out in the sun. <laughs> I've gotten I've gotten sunburns from spray tans. You do, oh, have you gotten spray tans? Well, I tried to once, but I did. It was really a home. It was a home kit. Yeah. And so I just looked like I had what are they called? Cafe au lait? Like I looked like a <laughs> I looked like a a Jewish Dalmatian. <laughs> <laughs> that could be your superhero. Think about it. A Jewish like, Dalmatian. Right. <laughs> I can't wait to see the show. It's called In the Know. It is available now on Peacock. Zach Woods, everybody. We'll be back with Jacob Collier.